In this video, we provide the solution to question number 25 for the practice final exam for Math 1050. We're given a polynomial equation, uh, well, a function, I should say, 2x to the fourth plus x cubed minus 35x squared minus 113x plus 65. And we have to find all complex or, or real zeros, all the real roots or, or complex roots for this one here. All right? Um, so we want to start factoring this thing. Uh, let's see, what can we do? Uh, so notice by Descartes' rule of variation of signs, there's two variations there. So that tells us there's either two positive roots uh, or no positive roots, right? That would also, a similar calculation would tell us that there's two negative roots or none, right? Uh, in which case, there could be some complex roots that are non real. So we should be cautious of that. That doesn't really tell us too much. Um, it's about equally likely there's positive or negative roots. So if we apply the rational roots theorem, what are my possible rational roots here? So looking at divisors of 65 divided by divisors of 2. 65, of course, um, factors as 5 times 13. And so your possible divisors of 65 are plus or minus 1, plus or minus 5, plus or minus 13, plus or minus 65. We have to also divide these by 2. So we get plus or minus 1 half, plus or minus 5 halves, plus or minus 13 halves and plus or minus 65 halves, like so. And so we then have to find which of these roots is going to work. Um, you never wanna try the big ones because if a big one worked, it meant a little one works as well. Um, so try smaller ones first. Um, there's a little bit of guessing and checking. Um, so notice here that we have some fractions as possibilities. And in some regard, we might have to go there eventually, right? Because um, when you look at when you look at this polynomial, the leading coefficient is 2, but none of the other coefficients are divisible into 2. So the only way that 2 could be the leading coefficient is that you have a non-integer root. Um, it could be a rational one, such as these ones right here, or it could be irrational or uh, non-real as well. So at some point, we're going to have to do something that's not an integer. But we don't necessarily have to start there, right? We could try a couple things. Um, again, I kind of want to hesitate to do the fractions until I have to. So I might try 1 or 5. You know, or, you know, something like that. You don't want to try something too, too big. Um, so we could try one because there are some numbers less than one, like one half is less than one, but all these other ones are bigger. So I'm actually, I want to try something kind of in the middle so I can try this hot and cold game. So let's try positive five. Uh, we're going to then do synthetic division. So make sure you have all of the coefficients there. Two, one, negative 35, negative 113, and 65. And we said we're trying five. Go through the calculation there. Bring down the 2. 2 times 5 is 10. Plus 1 is 11. 11 times 5 is 55. Minus 35, that's going to give us 20. Uh, times that by 5, we're going to end up with 100. Minus, thir uh, minus 113 gives us negative 13. And then 5 times 13, like we said, was 65. So actually, that was a pretty good guess to start off with. We ended up with uh, 65 minus 65, which gives us 0. So now we have a factorization. We should always use the factorization when we find it. So we're going to get f of x equals x minus 5 times 2x cubed plus 11x squared plus 20x minus 13. So let's reevaluate what we have right here. We found one of our positive roots. So if you look at the variation of signs, you only have one variation. So there's going to be one positive root left. Um, there's either two or zero negative roots. Uh, in terms of the possible rational roots, uh, take P over Q for a moment. Um, so factors of 13, you're going to get plus or minus 1, plus or minus 13. We haven't tried those ones yet. But you also have these fractions here. 1 half, um, 1 half, 13 halves. And then uh, that, that's just going to be it on this one, right? So we eliminate a lot of the fractions as a possibility. 5 halves and 65 halves no longer work. 5 is now out from consideration. So what... Which of these remaining ones do we want to try? Um, again, at some point, we probably should try a fraction. I don't want to yet. Uh, so let's try x equals 1. All right, that seems like a good choice there. So if we take the coefficients 2, 11, 20, and negative 13, we try 1 in that situation. Bring down the 2. 2 times 1 is 2. Plus, thir plus 11 is 13 times 1 is 13 plus 20 is 33, times 1 is 33, minus 13 is 20. Um, that was not a root, but notice that everything was positive on the bottom. Turns out 1 is an upper bound, so let's eliminate some things. 1 did not work. Also, 13 will not work because it's bigger than 1. Uh, 13 halves will also not work because it's bigger than 1. 
And so the only positive rational root left is one half, um, which I know there's one more positive root. It could be irrational, so it might not be one half. But like I said, that coefficient of two right there suggests we're gonna have to have something that's not an integer. So it seems like one half is worth a try. Uh, we've been avoiding it up until this moment, but it kind of feels like it's the last positive root that we it's worth trying here. Because if one half doesn't work, it means the other positive root is irrational. Let's try it. So two times one half is one plus 11 is 12 times one half is six plus 20 is 26 times one half is 13. Uh, then minus 13 plus 13 is zero. So we did find it after all. So my hesitancy, while that was valid in the end, it turned out it was gonna work. So let's see what we have now. F of X is equal to X minus five. That's what we have. Then we have X minus one half. Then um, we're gonna get two X squared plus 12 X plus 26. Notice that everything in the quadratic is divisible by two. Uh, we can factor out that two and actually then redistribute it onto the X minus one half there. So we get a much better factorization, x minus 5. Uh, we're going to get 2x minus 1. And then our quadratic is going to look like x squared plus 6x plus 13, like so. Uh, looking at that polynomial, x squared plus 6x plus 13, there's no variation of signs, so there's no positive roots. Um, the remaining roots are either going to be both negative, um, but again, they could be rational. They could be Quad, or they could be non-real. But the good news is we have a quadratic polynomial. We could find the remaining roots by just simpler factorization processes, right? Factors of 13 that add to be six, that's not gonna happen. Um, so there are actually are no more rational roots. We should try the quadratic formula. X equals here, we get negative six plus or minus the square root of 36 minus four times 13 is going to give us uh, 52. And this all sits above two here. 36 minus 52, we see that discriminant is gonna be negative. So we actually have some non-real solutions here. We end up with a negative 16 over two. Uh, the square root of negative 16 is going to be negative four i. Factor down to two from the top, you get negative three plus or minus um, two i there, all over two, the twos cancel. And so we see that the remaining roots are gonna be negative three plus or minus two i. And so we've now found all four roots of our polynomial. We have x equals one half, um, five, and then we have negative three plus or minus two i as our four roots. Two of them turned out to be non-real, that's okay. The instructions wanted all complex roots and there they are.